Hi guys, I'm back. I know it's been a while, but I've been super, super busy. Anyway, let's make a start with the next video. So as you guessed it, this one is based on how to design a pad foundation. So let's begin. First question is, what is a pad foundation? Well, as you can clearly see, this is the pad in my diagram. A pad foundation is, uh, is generally a structure which is sort of the ground and it takes the dead and the imposed load of the roof and the stories, uh, the, the floors of the building. Um, I'll trouble down the column and then uh, distribute it uh, down through the pad. Okay, so when you're designing a pad foundation, there are three main critical checks you should do. Um, so A, as I put it, is bearing pressure check. B is the uplift check and C is sliding check. So these are the three main ones. These are the only sort of three checks that you've got to check your pad. See if it passes in all three. And if they do, then the pad dimensions that you've selected, great, uh, they'll work for the loading. Okay, so let's begin. So this is the bearing pressure check. So for example, also by the way, this is step three. Uh, I put them in steps just to make it easier. Um, so, for example, if you're at university and your lecturer is going to, he will give you this information or if you're uh, in the office um, and, you know, a, a client's come through, this, the dead loads, the service or the imposed loads, the you can all figure out, um, depending on, on what the structure is made of. So the dead load consists of the roof, the, 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 um, the dead load of the rafters on the roof and the purlins. Service stored is given just in case someone wants to go up on the roof and change things or walk on it, or, you know, for whatever reason. Imposed load and wind load, wind uplift. So the dead load is 67.4 kilonewtons. Service load 18.5 kilonewton. Imposed load 44.4 kilonewton. And wind uplift is 83.5 kilonewton. Wind uplift, it, it, it's it's as it describes, it's the wind acting on the structure, pulling it up. And so I've said for our pad design, let's allow for a 2x2, two 2x2, by 1.1 two, two by two, meter depth pad foundation. So then the general rule with pad foundations is, is whatever the length and the width of the pad is that you've specified, the depth is always half of it. So say, for example, if you decided to do a uh, a pad foundation that's three by three meters the depth would be 1.5 meters okay so let's move on to the next step and we're still on step three because we're doing the bearing pressure check so the first thing to do is to calculate the total vertical load on the pad so this would include the self weight of the pad the overburden the overburden is known to be the soil above the pad because remember the pad is going to go into the ground as it's part of the as the pad is a foundation and i said that we've got 450 millimeters of soil above the pad so that's what the that's what the overburden is and then you account for the total vertical load tvl so let's go back to the self weight of the pad so as we've already specified the dimensions i've said it's the volume which is 2.2 by 2.2 by 1.1 depth times the density of concrete, which is 24 kilonewtons per meter cubed, which gives you a total of 127.8 kilonewtons. Then for the overburden, again, you do the volume times the density of the soil. In this case, it's 18 kilonewtons per meter cubed. So we've got 2.2 by 2.2 by the height of the soil, which is 0.45 meters or 450 mil times by 18 gives you 39.2 kilonewtons and then you can go ahead and calculate the total vertical load which is the dead load <coughs> plus the service plus the impose plus the self weight of the pad which you've just worked out here and the overbearing which you just worked out here and then you add them all up and that gives you a total of 297.304 kilonewtons now to work out the total bearing pressure you need your total vertical total vertical load tvl over the area to give you the bearing pressure in kilonewtons per meter squared <coughs> excuse me so we know our total vertical load and we know our area because we've said our pad dimensions are going to be 2.2 by 2.2 by 1.1 1 
So once we've done this, we, we get a total bearing pressure of 61.46 kilonewtons per meter squared. And this is less than the allowable bearing pressure, which is 100 kilonewtons per meter squared. Therefore, for this pad foundation, <coughs> with these dimensions here, the bearing pressure passes. So for this pad design, the bearing pressure passes too. Right, step four, the uplift check. So to calculate the uplift check, you need to figure out the minimum dead load. So the minimum dead load is the self weight or slash the dead load. So essentially the dead load of the self weight of the rafters and the purlins. Um, plus the self weight of the pad, which we just worked out before, plus the overburden, which again, we just worked out before. So, uh, so once we've got our minimum dead, we get a total of 234.4 kilonewtons. And with the uplift, uplift check, you check it against the factor of safety, which I've abbreviated to S, uh, FOS. And the factor of safety for an uplift check, according to British standards, is 1.4. So if you get a factor of safety, if your ratio that you get, when you check against uplift is greater than 1.4, your pad design passes for the uplift check. So what I've done here, factor of safety against the uplift. So 234.4 divided by 83.5 gives you 2.807. Now, as you can see clearly, this exceeds 1.4, therefore it passes in the uplift. So now we know that it passes in the bearing pressure and it passes in the uplift. Now we only have sliding check to it, which brings us on to step five, which is the sliding check. So for the sliding check, you need the net vertical load, which is essentially the dead load minus the wind uplift. So sorry, it's the dead minimum minus the wind uplift. And the dead minimum you just worked out in step four. So if you need to go back, just rewind um, and, and pause the video and, and you can t write down the minimum dead load. So in for this example, it's 234.4 minus the wind uplift, which is 83.5, which gives you a net vertical load of 150.9 kilonewtons. Now for the sliding check, because you have a pad base and you're checking against the component that's sliding, that's pushing, that's going to push away the pad design, the parameters, the soil comes into play here. So for those that are at university might have studied soil mechanics, or those in industry that, you know, may have come across this on TED, so you'll know that this KP is the passive uh, pressure coefficient. Um, and this is the formula right here used for it. So you have one plus sine, of the internal angle of friction which in this case is 30 over 1 minus sine internal angle of friction so as a result I've got 3 as you can see and then the next thing to do is to calculate the passive resistance which is this formula here that's what you're using so it's kp times density times the height times the height over 2 the h over 2 accounts for the triangular distribution uh, of the passive passive resistance uh, acting on the acting on the pad foundation so step five still on sliding check so again for sliding check they check it against the factor of safety which is this long formula here it seems long but it's not actually that long so you have your net vertical load which we just worked out before times a coefficient value which is over here <clears throat> when checking against sliding it's the coefficient is 0 0.45 plus plus the passive resistance which is what we just worked out in this step here which is that value there 32.67 over the wind horizontal uh, minus the horizontal dead load plus the horizontal self weight load so, um, the net vertical load we worked out, which is 150 times by the coefficient uh, value, I believe that's a coefficient value for friction, um, plus the passive pressure, which is 32.69, over the wind horizontal, 
So in this case, I've been given that the wind horizontal is 53 kilonewtons minus 2.3 plus 2.4. So the 2.3 is the horizontal uh, dead load and the 2.4 is the horizontal self weight load. And then once you put that into the calculator, you'll get a value of 2.04 factor of safety. And if this is greater than 1.6, then it passes in the sliding check. <coughs> and that is how you design a pad foundation.